Hey, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about how to find the arc sine and arc cosine with quadrants and angles. Now, the one thing you want to think about is the definition of the arc sine and arc cosine functions, and because the, each function is defined over certain quadrants, not all the quadrants. So if you look at the arc sine function, or it's also known as the sine inverse of a function, they're both defined, they're both the same thing. The one thing you want to consider is the arc sine function is defined only on quadrants one and four. Okay, that means quadrants two and three are not covered. They're not defined over the arc sine function. So when you find the arc sine of an angle, a calculator is only going to give you the first angle that it knows. And so what you want to do is use reference angles to find out what the other angle is going to be. So it might give you a quadrant one angle, and you might have to find the quadrant four, or vice versa, depending on how you have it set up. Now the arc cosine function, or cosine inverse, which means the same thing, due to the definition of the arc cosine, is defined only on quadrants one and two. So quadrants three and four are not part of the definition. They're not defined on the arc cosine function. So when you want to find the, arc, the cosine inverse of, of a value to find the angle, again, what a calculator will provide you is more often than not, it will give you the quadrant one angle. It's up to you using reference angles to find the quadrant two solution. So understanding and keeping in mind the definitions, you can plug in the values and it'll give you one answer, but it'll be up to you to find the other answer. So I'm Jimmy Chang and that's how, and that's how to find the arc sine and arc cosine using quadrants and angles.